In today's episode of Artisan Advice, we're gonna answer the question, which is better, a zoom lens or a prime for shooting portraits? Let's find out. Welcome back everyone. My name is Miguel Quiles. I'm a Sony artisan of imagery and let's jump right into this topic of which type of lens is better for portraiture. Should you go with a zoom lens or should you go with a prime lens? Now the answer to this could really be, it depends, right? But you don't want to hear that as an answer. I hate it when people say it depends um, because I want to know specifically which is better. So let's talk about the three things for each category of lens that you may prioritize and you may find that one might be better than the other. So let's start off first with zoom lenses. So the first thing when you're trying to figure out whether or not a zoom lens is good enough for you is do you need versatility? Because if you need versatility, then there really is only one option and that's to go with a zoom lens. Something like this 24 to 70 F 2.8 G Master version two, you've got a bunch of different focal lengths. Like if you try to go and buy a prime lens that covered all of these different focal lengths, you're buying at least four, five, maybe six different lenses. Um, so it's gonna cost you quite a bit more. You have a lot of versatility. You've got 24 millimeter all the way to 70 millimeters. So you could shoot full body. You could shoot mid length. You could shoot close ups. You could do all of that with one single lens. So that's one of the big benefits is that zoom lenses give you a lot of versatility. So the next thing with zoom lenses is they represent a fantastic value. If you're looking to basically get one lens that does it all, that you would be looking at something like this 24 to 70, or maybe even something like a 70 to 200. Or if you wanna get the best of both worlds and you wanna be able to basically do anything that the world would ever throw at you, get a 24 to 70 and a 70 to 200, and literally any situation that you run into, you've got the versatility to cover that. You can cover the wides, you can cover the tights and everything in between with just two lenses. Now again, if you try to do that with a prime, you're buying a lot of different prime lenses. So it's just a great value. Um, for example, with these two lenses, you're gonna end up spending a lot less buying one lens like this than you would buying multiple prime lenses. So the value side of things is definitely part of the equation and it's definitely something you wanna consider if you're looking to get a zoom lens for portraits. The next thing that I personally consider when I'm looking at something like a zoom lens is that you could actually be a lot more creative with a zoom lens. Because you have so many different focal lengths to choose from, you could choose to shoot stuff wide, you could shoot the tights, the middles, all with one lens, and it just allows you to be a lot more creative. It's not one of those types of lenses where you know you see a certain shot and you're like, man, I wish it was a little bit wider. Then you gotta dig in your bag, get a wider lens. You don't have to do any of that. You could actually just let your creativity run and just worry about composing the shots exactly the way that you wanna compose them using something like a 16 to 35, a 24 to 70, 70 to 200, or a combination of all three. And that allows you to basically get anything that life or the world might throw at you. So now let's talk about prime lenses like this 85 millimeter F1.8, which if you watch my content here on Alpha University, you already know I love this lens. Um, prime lenses have a lot of advantages. One of the biggest advantages is the fact that typically these types of lenses give you the best sharpness, the best image quality, less chromatic aberration. It's just gonna be overall optically a much better lens, but the restriction is that you're locked into that one focal length. So it kind of makes sense that you're gonna get kind of like the best of all um, that is to come with image quality. But the restriction is that in this case, you just have an 85 millimeter focal length. Now you can zoom in by walking a little bit closer or backing up, but in certain situations, you, you may not have the room to be able to do that, right? So having that flexibility on the zoom side is really great. If optimal image quality is something that you really like with your work, then perhaps a prime lens might be the way to go. So the other thing that you may wanna consider if you're trying to decide between these two is that if you're looking at a prime lens, they're typically going to be smaller and lighter than a zoom lens. Now, notwithstanding this uh, version two of the 24 to 70 G Master, which is a lighter and smaller lens, um, but even with everything that they've done to make this smaller and lighter, a lens like the 85 1.8 is still smaller and it's still lighter. You're still gonna get great optical uh, performance with this type of lens. So you're gonna get a lens that's gonna be a little bit smaller, especially if you're looking at something like a 35 G Master or a 24 G Master. 
Um, these lenses are going to be a lot smaller than going with something like a 2470 or a 16 to 35 or a 70 to 200. So these are things you have to keep in mind. If you don't like to have a heavier lens on your camera body, maybe you might be like me where I sometimes feel like if I have a heavier lens on my camera that it kind of restricts my creativity because uh, it does kind of make me a little bit more susceptible to being tired if I'm shooting outdoors in the heat. These are things you have to keep in mind. Maybe a prime lens might be the better option for you if you wanna have something that's a little bit smaller. Another thing to consider when you're looking at these two different categories of lenses is that you could typically get a higher end prime for less than what you would pay for a higher end zoom. Now it kind of sort of makes sense because a higher end zoom lens is gonna give you a variety of different focal lengths. Um, they are a little bit harder to create and to manufacture because you have to get great image quality across multiple different focal lengths. Uh, but the reality is that you could actually get really high-end primes, stuff like the 135G Master, the 50mm G Master, 35G Master, all of these lenses give you insane image quality and they're going to cost you less than what you would pay for a zoom lens, something like that 2470 or 70 to 200. So for the value and for the type of image quality that you're getting, you actually get better image quality for a little bit less in that high-end category when you're comparing zooms and primes. Okay, so the question stands, which one is best? Now, I started off by saying it depends, and you know, it kind of still sort of depends, right? Because if, for example, you prioritize having like the best of the best image quality, then it could very well be that a prime lens is gonna be the best way for you to go. However, if let's say maybe you're an event photographer or a wedding photographer, and you don't wanna carry a bunch of different types of lenses with you, then you could technically get a 16 to 35, 24 70, and a 70 to 200, and you could literally shoot all day long. Anything that an event or a wedding might throw at you, you're gonna be able to capture it confidently and quickly using a zoom lens. So the question is, for the type of portraits that you shoot, what do you prioritize? What's the most important thing? Do you value having the best image quality? Do you value having the versatility of a zoom lens? Let me know. This is a really interesting conversation. Let's talk about it in the comment section below. While you're down there, make sure you like this video and subscribe to Alpha Universe because we got new videos releasing all the time. Now, before you go, I've got this video here on the channel that I think you will find very interesting. Make sure you check it out before you head out and I'll see you there.